What's up beautiful people? I hope you are well. This is your maths coach. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we begin today's lesson, I have a favor to ask you. To help this channel grow, please subscribe and press that bell icon. Also, please share with your friends and your family and your neighbors, anybody that may benefit from the content on this channel. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to solve simultaneous equations. Simultaneous equations where you have one linear and one quadratic. Okay, so on to our first question. Our quadratic is y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2. And our linear equation is y plus x is equal to 3. So as before, good practice. We are labeling our equations. And we now need to use a method of substitution. So we want to substitute one equation into the other. Now if you have a look at both our equations, this is the more simple equation. We can rearrange this equation, the linear one, so that we've got something like this. y is equal to, by taking the x to the other side, 3 minus x. And we can call this our third equation, although it is equation number two in a different form. How this is going to serve our purpose is that we are going to substitute y is equal to 3 minus x into our quadratic equation, equation number 1. That means wherever we see a y in this equation, we are going to substitute our value, which is y is equal to 3 minus x. Now, where is the y here? So we have y here is equal to all of that. So instead of writing y now, we can write 3 minus x equal to all of that. So that would be 3 minus x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2. Just to recap what I've done in case anyone is confused, see where y was here, okay? That's where y is. And we said that we rearranged the second equation to make y is equal to 3 minus x by taking the x onto this side. So we have y is equal to 3 minus x. So instead of writing y, we just wrote 3 minus x. And that's what we have here. This is what we have now. We need to now simplify this by taking and collecting the like terms. So if you see here, we've got x squared on this side and there's nothing like it, so we can write x squared. We've got minus 1x here onto, going onto the other side that will be adding x. So we'll be adding to this already, giving us 4x. We have minus 2 on this side. When we take the 3 to this side, we're going to it's a positive 3 here, so we're going to take it away on the other side, and that gives us minus 5. And now we've got nothing left on this side, so that's why we're going to have it equal to 0. We could also, just for better understanding, it's this side is equal, is equal to 0, really, but it doesn't matter which way around we put it, because at the end of the day, it equals to 0. And I'm just going to rewrite this, because this is a form that we understand much better, and we have this quadratic equation. And you now need to factorize this so that you can find the value of x. If you don't know how to factorize, please refer to my video on factorizing. Okay, so I'm going to put the double brackets in here. So x goes in here, x goes in here. I want to have a 5 there, so 5 and 1. I'm just going to check that there's plus here and a minus here. That's correct. So therefore, I've got x minus 1 in one bracket and x plus 5 in the other bracket. So this bracket, x is going to be equal to 1. And on this bracket, x is going to be equal to minus 5. So I have two values of x. I need to substitute those two values of x to find my value of y now. So to do this, I'm just going to get rid of all this. I'm just going to write this up here. So x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 5, get rid of that too. Okay, now to do this, I'm going to substitute both of these values into my equation. I'm not even going to substitute anything into here because this is a very, very complicated calculation awaiting me. I'll choose the more simple linear equation. So here and here, I will substitute the value of x. In fact, I'm not going to substitute in here, I'm going to substitute into this version of it. Remember, this is the same thing as that, just rearrange. So y is equal to 3 minus x. So let's do this one here. So y is equal to 3 minus x. And remember, our x is 1. So y is equal to 3 minus 1. That gives us 2. And the same for this one. y is equal to 3 minus x. 
So 3 minus x. x in this case is minus 5. So I'm just going to use a bracket for that. So y is equal to 3 minus and a minus here gives you a plus. So 3 plus 5. So y is equal to 8. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. When x is equal to minus 5, y is equal to 8. But have I done this correctly? I need to check. How do I check? I can substitute it into this. So let's do our check for this one. So x is 1, y is 2. So have a look at this one. So y is 2, x is 1. So 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 2. Now this side should equal that side. Let's see if it does. 1 squared is 1, 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. So that works out because 2 equals 2. This side, x is minus 5, y is equals to 8. So y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2 once again is going to be looking like this. So 8 is y. So y is equal to an x squared, that is minus 5 squared, plus 3 times minus 5, and then minus 2. So let's see if this side equals to that side, and then it will be correct. So minus 5 squared is 25, and then 3 times minus 5 is minus 15, so minus 15 overall, and then minus 2. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. So both sides are correct and therefore our values are correct. Often in an exam, however, they may ask you to write this in a coordinate form. So that simply means you just write, for example, 1 and 2 like this and minus 5 and 8 like that. So these are our solutions. At first, you may not understand this, so you are going to require another example, which I've got coming up for you right now. Okay, so the next example, x plus y is equal to 7, x squared minus xy is equal to 4. Step number one, label the equation. All right, so remember what I said in the previous example? I said take the linear equation, rearrange it, so you can substitute it into the quadratic equation. So here's our linear equation. Make one of them the subject. So you could, in, in the last example, I had y is equal to something. I made y the subject. You could decide that you want to have x to be the subject, okay? It doesn't really matter. But it does help what you make the subject. You see, here we've got y on its own. So I can, if I was to make y the subject here, I can just put something nice and simple and then multiply with the x here, okay? So let's see what happens. So y is equal to, so I'm making y the subject, by taking x to the other side. So what's that going to be? That's going to be 7 minus x. So this is my new form of equation number 1, which I will substitute it in equation number 2. So wherever in equation number 2 I see a y, I will write instead 7 minus x. All right? So here goes, so here's our substitution. So x squared minus x, aha, I've got a y. I, will, I said to you, I will substitute seven minus x in here because that's what I said the value of y is. And that will equal to four. What's required for me next is to expand this out. So x squared minus x times seven, so seven x, and then minus and a minus here, giving us a plus, x times x is x squared, that equals to 4. I'm going to collect all the like terms and take everything over to one side so that I have this in a quadratic form, okay, equal to 0. So x squared, x squared, that gives me 2x squared minus 7x, and I'll take the 4 to this side, and this is what I am left with. Now I will factorize this, so 2x, x on a 4 here, so if I put a 4, 1 here, that would work. Okay, once again, if you don't know how I'm factorizing, please refer to my video on quadratic factorization. All right, so I have um, x is equal to 1 minus 1 over 2, and x is equal to 4 here. So these are the two values 
of x that I have found. All I need to do is substitute these two values into equation number one, the linear uh, equation, so that I can find the y values that match and pair with them. So I'll rub this out once again, because I'm going to need the space. So now I'm left with x is equal to minus a half and x is equal to four. So I will substitute those values in. Now, if you're not comfortable using fractions, which I think that you should be as a higher level student, but it's okay if you're not. It's okay if you are not used to fractions. You are more than welcome to use decimals. You're going to get the same answer. The examiner is going to give you the same marks, as long as you do your calculations correctly. Okay, so x is equal to minus a half. So here we go. So just for your sake though, I will use decimals. So minus 0 0.5 plus y, which we need to work out. And then we've got minus 0 0.5 plus y is equal to seven. I want to take the minus 0 0.5 to the other side by adding 0 0.5 to this side. So I get 7.5. On to this side, I'm going to do x, which is 4, plus y equals 7. Take the 4 to this side, I get 7 minus 4, which is 3. So now we just need to check our values for x and y are both correct by substituting these values into the second equation here. So wherever we see an x, we're going to write minus 0.5. Wherever we see a y, we're going to write 7.5. So therefore, x is minus 0.5 squared minus... Now, the minus here is part of this equation. And our x value also has a minus. So it's going to be minus 0.5 times by y, which is 7.5. And that should equal 4. If you do that on your calculators now, so 0.25... And then the minus and a minus here is a plus, and that would be 0 0.5 times by 7.5, so that would be 3.75, and 0 0.25 plus 3.75 is equal to 4, so therefore 4 is equal to 4, and that side is correct. So those values are correct. Now, moving on to this one now. So the check now for this one, so we're going to do a check for this one. So we said that x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 3. So x squared minus x times y is equal to 4. Let's put them in. So therefore, 4 squared minus 4 times y. y is 3. And that should give you 4. So let's check this. So 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 3 is 12. And 16 minus 12 is equal to 4, so both sides equal to 4, and our answers are correct. Now, once again, remember, you need to put it into this form sometimes. So, minus 0.5 or minus a half, it's not a problem, and 7.5 in one is one solution. And the other one here is 4 and 3, the other solution. And those are written in the coordinate form which, um, as I've explained already to you, sometimes the examiners might require. I hope you're getting on okay so far. You're beginning to get the hang of this. If not, I've got a third example for you. y is equal to 2x plus 2, and x squared plus y squared is equal to 8. Why don't you pause the video, try it yourself, and then come back. All right, so step number one, we are going to label our equation equation number one and equation number two. Uh, already we have y the subject, uh, so we don't need to rearrange it uh, to make it equal to anything. We can just simply substitute it straight in there. So we are going to substitute equation number one straight into equation number two. So wherever we see a y, we are going to write 2x plus 2. So therefore x squared plus y, which is 2x plus 2, and it's squared, that equals to 8. And we are going to now expand this bracket out. So x squared plus, remember, two of these brackets will be here. So 2x plus 2 is equal to 8. Sorry about that. It's not written very nicely. Now it is. Okay, so x squared. And this would be 2x times 2x here. So 4x squared, 2x times 2 plus uh, plus 4x 
and then 2x times 2x is a number plus 4x and then 2 times 2 is 4. Collect all the like terms together so you got this and that which gives us 5x squared you got 4x, 4x is 8x. You've got the 4 here, but you're going to take the 8 onto this side anyway, so it gives you minus 4, and that's equal to 0. Now, all that's required is to factorise this. So 5x and x, and we can have 2 and 2 here. So we can have one on a positive here, so plus, and we're going to take that 2 away. And that gives us 2 over 5, and x is equal to minus 2. So our two values of x is 2 over 5, which is also 0 0.4, and x is equal to minus 2. So we'll substitute those two values into the equation up here so that we can find the corresponding y values. All right, so let's get rid of this. All right, so now that we've got rid of that, so we're going to use the first equation. So y is equal to 2 times x. x here is 0 0.4 plus 2. 2 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.8 plus 2. That gives us 2.8 for y. On this side, we have x equals minus 2. So y is equal to 2 times minus 2 plus 2, therefore y is equal to minus 4, plus 2, y is equal to a minus 2. We just need to check that our values are correct by doing that final check step. So we will do this by substituting both the values of y and x into the second equation here. So x squared plus y squared equals 8 is the equation. So 0 0.4 squared plus 2.8 squared, that should give us 8. So 0 0.4 squared gives us 0 0.16, 2.8 squared gave us 7.84. And if you add them together, both sides equal to 8. On to this one. So once again, x is equal to minus 2, so it's going to be minus 2 squared and y is equal to minus 2 so it's going to be minus 2 squared as well and minus 2 squared is 4 minus 2 squared over here is also 4 and then 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 so our solutions are correct all that is left now is to write them in the coordinate form so for the first one here um, I'll write 0 0.4 and 2.8 and for this one, it's going to be minus 2 and minus 2. So they are our two solutions. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share with your friends and family if you found this beneficial. And please help the channel to grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.